Welcome to my new series of videos on mastering CRM analytics. Today we're going to look at five best practices for building effective dashboards in CRMA. So you can see here we've got an example dashboard around marketing attribution. And the first best practice that I want to share with you is to always follow a human-centered design approach. Always follow a human-centered design approach. Now we could look at this dashboard and maybe admire the colors or perhaps we like the layout, uh, but that's irrelevant if it doesn't meet the needs of the individuals within the organization. So when designing this dashboard, I spent a great amount of time with the end users to figure out what they really needed to see, what problems they needed to solve, and what questions they needed to answer. So always follow a human-centered design approach. Second best practice is to keep things simple. Keep things simple. Now let's be honest, this does not look terribly simple. This is not super user friendly. However, if I drill down into my product, now I have a dashboard that's quite easy to read and to click through and to drill into my data and help the data to tell a story. So you always want to keep your dashboard as simple as possible and follow the famous KISS principle. Keep it simple, stupid. Best practice number three is that a great dashboard is intuitive. So a great dashboard should be uh, easy to use and to follow. It should not require uh, a great amount of uh, training or instruction on how to use it. So clearly if I'm working this dashboard, I've got my filters up here that I can use to drill into my data. I can drill down uh, into uh, various product families. I'm hovering over different areas of the dashboard to get uh, the insights and results that I require. I'm clicking on the uh, arrow to remove the filters. Really, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Wouldn't require a great amount of instruction on how to use this. And that's critical for user adoption. Best practice number four is as much as possible present your metrics in context. So for example, you can see here for the trend of lead age uh, last 90 days and for all time, I have a goal number here and I have a goal number here. And that's important because who knows if, for example, 69 is great or if it's terrible. Now you may have a goal, you may use an average line, you might measure period over period change whatever the case may be. Up here, we've got the context of averages, okay? But to help metrics mean something, it's always important to set the context. Lastly, number five, analytics is all about a business result. Ask the question, how will people use these insights? Now you've already followed a human-centered design approach, that's great. But when your initial uh, phase one, that first iteration is complete, sit down with your business users, uh, the team of testers, and ask them, what will they do with these insights? How will they action them? What's the business outcome? What's the business result? Because without that, I don't care how beautiful your dashboard is, you've just really wasted a whole bunch of time. So again, five best practices for effective dashboards. Number one, follow a human-centered design approach. Number two, keep things simple. Number three, a great dashboard is intuitive. Number four, present metrics in context. And number five, analytics is all about a business result. Do you have any more ideas? Do you have any suggestions what you think are best practices? Put them in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you.